I gave AI complete control over one of the most difficult plans to take care of for an entire month. Here is what happened. Hey everyone, Paolo from Alorn Inc. And you have probably heard the whole AI, artificial intelligence is going to destroy humanity. It is going to come for your job. It is just going to wreck us. So I wanted to sort of test that out with ChatGPT and myself and plant care. Plants are something that you need to be basically physically looking at them to see how well they do. So I had to tweak a little bit of the requirements or the way that this experiment would work. So I wanted to challenge ChatGPT with one of the most difficult plants, a plant that I have personally already failed at growing successfully. I thought that would give me a little bit of like more incentive to do well and then it would allow me to take care of this plant even from the side of the competitor. So when you take a moment and think of what plant has the reputation for being the most difficult, most finicky, what plant is one that you have already probably failed at growing, I know I definitely already failed at growing, and what do you think that plant is? Yes, if you thought it is a Calithia, you would be a thousand percent correct. Calithias are just known for being extremely difficult to take care of. They're just really finicky. And this is a Calithia Stella, which is a cultivar of white fusion that has a little bit of like a longer kind of leaf. And it's a lot more white. It doesn't have kind of like the lime green that the other one does. I thought this Calithia was perfect for this experiment because they are also really visually compelling. They are part of the whole prayer plant sort of category. It's not a real category, but we just call it that. Basically, what it means is that the leaves will be moving up and down throughout the day, almost like a prayer, depending on the conditions. So I just thought it would be a lot of fun to film some time lapse of the entire 30 days and then just seeing the comparison as they are also moving. So yes, I mentioned that this is a plant that I have already failed in the past and I have the receipts. I'm posting a picture of what this plant used to look like when I got it a couple of years ago and what it looks like now. So it kind of reverted. This was so difficult to take care of. I could not find a spot that it would be happy. I would put it in, it was out, outdoors. Well, let's start with that. I was trying to grow it outdoors in Florida. And, you know, I was trying that. So I would move it to one spot and the leaves would be super happy. They would start to flourish. It would be super, super bushy. And then like I would water it, a week would go by and out of the blue, the entire thing was like burnt. The entire thing would be like crunchy. The entire thing was like super sad and wilted. And I was like, the hell? And then I would move it to like a different spot. And again, the water would be fine. It wasn't like over water or anything. And the plant would just come back to life and it would be all luscious. Then it would just be like a week where it got really hot. And again, the leaves would just be damaged. And then this plant basically just got cut down so much that it just lost its variegation. It just started putting out green leaves and I've yet to be able to bring it back. I transferred it to Leka. Like it's doing fine in it. It's, you know, nothing crazy, but... I just did not get any more variegation. So I feel like I have so a personal point to prove by taking care of this plant successfully in multiple ways because I already failed taking care of this one. Um, maybe out of envy it'll grow back to being like a white fusion instead of just a Calithia, whatever this is. <laughs> so what is my plant? If you know anything about Calithias is that they absolutely hate being repotted. Being repotted is not what they like. So what I'm going to do is repot it. So as you can see, this plant has like multiple growth points coming from it. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is just split it in half and have myself take care of like half of it and then and then ChatGPT take care of the other half. It's sitting in this sort of like cocoa core kind of chunky uh, mix and I paid $32 for it. All right, so we're going to go to ChatGPT and we're going to input some of like the prompt. It is really important that you're really specific on all of the environmental stuff. As many details as you can give the AI is how much better your answer is going to be. Don't forget that AI will hallucinate. Its job is to give you an answer whether or not it knows what the answer is. So you need to help it by being as specific as possible. So what we're going to say is, first of all, hey, babe, of course, I'm going to be nice to the AI. So when it takes over the world, I have receipts that I was nice to it. So we're going to, 
So I always like to be a little extra and always start with your botany GPT or anything that I want to make it pretend that it is, like your communications GPT, your writer GPT. I don't know if it actually does anything, but I think it's fun. So then I like to add a little bit extra and I tell it that is a, it has a specialization in Califias. So I'm going to tell it that I am a new plant owner and I just bought a Califia White Fusion Stella. I wanted to write the best soil mixture to use. It is currently in a cocoa core, Oop. in a cocoa core mix, and I'm going to ask for it to include the X percent I need of each ingredient. I'm going to be putting it into a five inch clear pot. The average humidity of the room is 60 to 70 percent. The average temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and it has a pretty decent air circulation or airflow. It will be around 12 inches from a Barina T5 light um, that is full spectrum. And then I'm going to ask for it to write the entire watering schedule for December 2023 in the exact milliliter as possible. So let's see what happens. It says, congratulations on your new Califia White Fusion. It sounds like you've set up a great environment for it. Here's a tailored care plant for your plant. All right, so let's start with this. So it says, soil mixture. Given the current full cocoa core mix, you can enhance it for better growth. Calithias prefer well-draining, nutrient-rich soil. Here's a recommended mix. 60% cocoa core retains moisture while allowing airflow. 20% perlite increase aeration and drainage. 10% orchid bark provides structure and aeration. And 10% warm castings to supply extra nutrients. Then for potting, you have 5-inch clear pot is a good choice especially for monitoring root health and moisture levels, ensure it has drainage holes, which it does. Then it says, um, good airflow is beneficial, but avoid direct drafts. It does not have a direct draft. It said, um, a 12 inch distance from Arena T5 full spectrum light should provide sufficient light without being too intense. Perfect. So the watering schedule for December, 2023. Check, um, Calithias prefer consistent moisture, but is light being waterlogged. Here's a detailed schedule of my watering. So for this is going to be checking it every week. Before watering, I need to check the topsoil inch. If it's dry, it's time to water. Mm, that's kind of basic, I'm not doing that. So given the environmental conditions, start with 100 to 150 milliliters water per session, adjust based on the plant's responses and environmental changes. Watering frequency, you likely we will need to water approximately once a week, but this can vary as you can always check the soil. So water quality, use distilled or filter water to avoid leaf tip burn. Um, with Calithias, are sensitive due to mineral tap water. Then it says, remember these are guidelines. Your plan will tell you what it needs. Watch for signs that is not useful. In this case, we're going to pretend that it has no real control because the AI is always going to tell you to monitor and give it better data so it can give you the best answer. If that doesn't work. I want specifics and I want to basically lock it in um, with dates so i'm gonna ask now say like great give me specific days in December. all right so it sounds like we're going to do watering on the friday so it says here to give it friday december 1st um friday december 8th friday december 15th 22nd and 29th that's pretty doable each watering session should be about 100 to 150 mils but please remember to do it. Awesome. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to split this pot. I'm going to cut half, basically put it in the mixture that it gave us specific percentages that we had to put it in. And then I'm going to put the other part in Leka because that's what I'm doing with all my plants. I'm trying to turn them all into Leka basically. So I'm really excited to see the difference. I'm going to put a time lapse of every week to the watering. I don't particularly think it's going to be like, every single day, but I'm going to try to capture as much footage as possible. All right, so we're gonna do a little voiceover because it ended up being too noisy and you know, it was not it. So at first I was really, really pumped out to remove the roots because it looks so good. Um, and then I started pulling and I realized that it was just not budging, that they were like fused harder and the harder I pulled, the more I just kept thinking, okay, you cannot stop pulling, you're gonna rip this plant. So I got myself some good old scissors that I had already cleaned up and then I was able to cut it. So for this next part is was a little bit different. 
um, because ChatGPT was asking for 60% Coco Peat, and this was basically saying 100% Coco Peat. I did not realize that it had nothing else in it. So when I pulled it out, a lot of it just fell in, and I just kind of reused what was already in it, and I just added on the perlite, I added on the, the orchid bark, and then I did not have warm castings, but I did have some of those granular um, feeding. So I just put a little bit of that. Um, I wasn't going to buy an entire container of warm castings just for this tiny little plant. So I ended up just kind of putting it in and covering it, and it was like, yep, it looks so cute. All right, and then this one is the one that is just going to get straight up abused. Um, first, I'm just removing all of the soil. I'm just like cleaning it, cleaning it, cleaning it. And when you're asking, why is there a container full of dirt? And then I'm like, I'm not going to put this in my sink. It's not working. And time jump. So <laughs> I did record the entire process of me like putting it in Leka and, and all that. But honestly, it, I don't know why I ended up doing it on the left side instead of moving the dirt tub. Um, So it did not look that good. So just believe me, I just dropped some Leka in it. <laughs> And then this is the sort of first big um, time lapse that I did with them. I was trying to record all of the movement. Um, it was getting a little bit of draft. You can see how that night they just got shocked and all of the longer leaves completely fell down. Um, yeah, and then you can see it just starting to go up, which I, I just found it to be beautiful. Um, I'm going to be honest. I have like hours and hours and hours and hours of this plant kind of going up and down slowly. Um but I did not think that would be the most interesting thing to watch for like 20 minutes. So I'm just giving you like the gist of it. Um, you can see some plants kind of like curling and dying, but you know, it, they basically just go up and down all day long. Hi there, welcome to the update. So right now is January 15th, 2024, and it has been a little bit over, I want to say a month. It has been basically five weeks since I started this project with the AI and teaching. I have been very diligent about watering schedule basically every week. Every Friday is the day that it gets um, watered, which is today. So we're going to water and then do a time lapse. Um, some of the updates with this is, as you can see, it has gotten a bunch of roots in there. Um, you can see them coming out of the sides. Um, the clear pot has made it really easy to see when the water is sort of going up and when it's a little dry. And surprisingly, within a week, it tends to be like the sweet spot. So I guess so far the AI has been correct. And then the other one was this one. This, are, this is the one that I transitioned into Leka. This one lost one leaf i have not removed not cleaned everything in the name of science so it lost one leaf uh recently it has gotten a little bit of yellowing on the side of some of the older leaves and you can see here this is another older leaf that is also having damage um, i'm not sure if this is just the transition into the water and the leka that was part of the shock but what i have noticed is a bunch of new growth so you can see in there uh, right here you see it's coming out here it's coming out here it's coming out higher uh, it's coming out everywhere so i've noticed that this plant in leka has had more growth this one basically stayed steady and it has also come out with a few of them but not nothing too crazy here i'm gonna lift to show you what the rules are doing it already managed to um break out of the it managed to break out of the container and now it's going into the reservoir with those roots. So that is always great for the hydroponic plants because that means that you basically can, I don't want to say neglect them, but as long as they have roots into the reservoir and there's water in the reservoir, they have a better chance of staying hydrated than if they have no roots in them. So today also helps for me to extend this experiment. I kept it for a month. And I'm not sure that was enough time. Either either it's not enough time because the AI is right and knows how to take care of this plant, or it's just not enough time for the um, environmental and just changes to take effect. I'm not sure. But I just felt like finishing this experiment within like last week when it would have been like four weeks 
it would have been um, not great because I wouldn't have a lot of real results. Like both plants are doing great. Both plants are thriving. The AI and myself are equally capable of taking care of this at this point. Um, so I'm not really sure yet what the lesson will be. So I wanted to extend this to eight weeks. So that way, um, I think it's going to give me a little bit more time and data. All right, it's time to water this, guys. And this whole time, I've been using this kind of squeeze uh, bottle that's measured. You can see that in the middle is 150. So that's basically what I just fill up to and then just put it on there. Hey guys, welcome to the final update. So today is February 9th, 2024, and it has been officially a little bit over two months since I started this little experiment. So the whole reason I pushed it another month was because I did not think that the results were good enough. As a refresher, I basically asked the AI to give me the care that it wanted me to give to this plant from the soil mix, to the watering schedule, to the amount of water. And I followed that really, really, really strictly for two months now. And the other one, I basically just did whatever I wanted. I wanted it to transition into LECA because I'm no longer doing like soil mixes. And also I wanted to water it with some of my own like nutrient mix, like the same one that I use for all of my other plants. I didn't want it to be only distilled water. Like I know that's what causes some of the tip burning, but you know, the whole challenge was me doing what I think would be the best care versus what the machine thought would be the best care. All right, so without any more explanation, let's show you some of the results. So this one is going to be, remember it is it's sitting in its pot. This is the plant that was um, basically taken care of with the AI. You can see it remained, it regained some leaves because you see it pushing out. It still has some of the upper ones and you can see that when it came down to like loss on this, we had one of the big leaves that died. We had two of the big leaves that died. Um, we have this other one here that is getting kind of like yellowy at the bottom, um, which I'm assuming is because it's like older. Same thing for this one is getting a little bit of yellow at the bottom. Um, but all of these leaves are on the outer part of the plant. And then you can see right here a bunch of like new growth coming out. One here. See, this one opened up already, but this is like the new leaf. You can see how well the roots grew. I was pretty impressed. I'm going to be honest, I was expecting this plant to struggle a lot more because I don't know. I just figured that it was not going to be enough water or like it was going to be too much water because I know how finicky they are about getting too dry. But I was honestly pleasantly surprised at how good of a job the machine did at calculating how much water it was going to need. Of course, it wouldn't last forever because the moment it gets too big, it's going to start sucking up more water. But at least for the first two months, the amount of water, the 200 milliliters per week was more than enough. The plant really enjoyed it, loved it, put out some new growth. And you only had a handful of leaves that were like completely like gone, gone. Now, mine. <laughs> So this is mine right here. Uh, let me just show you. This is the one that I transfer into Leka, as you can see right here. And it has all these beautiful roots just coming out at the bottom. Um, it has a bunch of roots that just completely took over the Leka, and you even see a really nice new growth right there. Um, so I think the reason why this plant has these sort of yellow leaves as you can see right here um you have two that are kind of like half dead and then you have a couple of the other ones so there's a total of one two three four four leaves and then one that is probably going to become the fifth one oh and a hidden one here six so i think what happened with this one was a couple of weeks ago you know i had said during the january update that it was growing uh, roots into the reservoir so basically that would mean that I could sort of just ignore it um, turns out I could not and I think what happened was I think I watered this one because this one was getting a different type of water the nutrient solution I must have just forgotten I must have gone back to put you know the scale and everything that I use for this one and I'm assuming that I just forgot 
because next thing I knew it had a bunch of these leaves yellowing which I was like oh that does not look good and I ran to it and when I lifted it like the roots were not wet like everything that was supposed to be in the reservoir was completely dry and of course everything in here was really dry and I I actually blamed that one watering that did not went well for a lot of the losses in this the other one did not have that because I was being a lot more like you know about what goes in it when it goes because i was trying to follow those rules exactly so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna trim all of the extra icky parts and then i'm gonna show you the final result so what i'm noticing now that i'm doing this final trim is that everything that died with the ai chat gpt care one all of them tended to be a lot of the older or those long leaves um i'm not seeing a lot of loss on those inner sort of like new leaves which is pretty great and here you have some new growth um, and you have some new growth underneath. I think I'm gonna just leave this ones because um, they're mostly green. So it's a variegated plant and I wanna just give it the best shot it's got. So this one I think is, is looking really good. With this one, however, I think what died were some of those side shoots that I, um, I showed previously. I just think these guys um, just got really, really dry after I forgot to water them and it just did not sort of work out. But I'm trimming this, trimming all the uglies. What I'm noticing the most is that it got bushier. It did lose all of the long leaves for sure. Um, but as you can see here, you have a new leaf coming out right here, which is one, a new leaf coming out right here, two, a new leaf coming out right here, three. And all of these ones that are coming out new, they're like new shoots. Like the plant is actually multiplying, is not just putting out new leaves. So I'm assuming that because I was using a lot more nutrients and I completely I stressed out the root ball that that created this sort of like growth that made it be maybe like a little bushier. Um, but I did have more loss in leaves in this one. And then for this one, I think I had a lot less loss in any kind of leaves because I was really, really on it when it came down to the watering schedule and to the conditions that it was in. Um, and I just think this one lost a lot less leaves, but it also has a lot less new growth. So let's count right here. You have one new leaf unfurling, but this is unfurling from not a new shoot. That's it. I think um, this little one here is also new, but it unfold, unfolded before. So I'm not a hundred. Um, and I also think this one is new, but I'm not like a hundred on that either because you cannot see the new growth in the same way that you see it here. So, you know, you tell me, what do you think? Do you think the losing less leaves and keeping the plant basically the way it was, would that be a winner, which is what ChatGPT managed to do with those instructions? Or me transitioning into LECA and then adding a lot more nutrients, basically just created a bushier like plant with no growth. Something else that I think helped these plants a lot was the consistent temperature. As you can see, the room temperature in this room is really consistent. And I think that's actually what helped the leaves the most. Because one thing that I do remember is that whenever we would have really big swings in temperature, my Calithia uh, fusion would just hate it. And it would completely lose a bunch of leaves. So I'm gonna go on a limb and say that maybe these plants are a lot more sensitive to a, an abrupt change in temperature and not being consistent rather than having high humidity, which they have like 60 to 70%, um, rather than the soil it's in, you know, of course the watering is gonna be important, but I think in order for you to keep the vast amount of leaves, it comes down to like the temperature. So you tell me, who do you think won? Last and least is going to be my Calithia um, White Fusion. Remember, this is the one that I had sort of mentioned that I used to own. I mean, I still own, but it used to be variegated and then eventually just hated being outside so much that it just completely lost its variegation. I will say this is the plant that had the most amount of growth out of all of them. It has just put out so many new leaves and it has so many new shoots and they're all freaking green, which is so frustrating. I think the best shot I have at regaining some variegation is um, in this new growth right here i will of course have a b b roll of it um you can see a little bit of variegation inside the leaves a lit tiniest of variegation um it did have really consistent growth um
But yeah, it was just not able to regain its variegation, but it was able to survive like the others. So there you have it, guys. This was an incredible experiment. I had a lot of fun taking care of the same plant in two completely different ways. I had a complete fun just fighting with ChatGPT to see who would win. Um, don't forget to comment down below who do you think did the better job at taking care of this plant over the past two months. And then, you know, I would love to see your feedback and what you think. Do you own this plant? Is it difficult for you? Um, I'm just, I really want to know what you guys think. Also, let me know down below if you like this kind of videos where I'm doing like experiments and just testing new things out with the same plant. Um, just comment down below if this is something you're interested in because I had a lot of fun and I would love to do some more of these.